Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at how to enhance a model explainability using Gen AI. Basically, when we train a ML model, it learns the pattern in the data and generalizes. Once the ML intelligence in the form of ML model has trained, we can look at the model feature importance, that is, which features it has given more importance to. We can also use libraries like Shapley to look at the global feature importance and to look at the instance level feature importance. Again, we can use local Shapley uh, importance plots. With the local Shapley importance plot, which uses game theory, it will tell us that which driver has led to the positive outcome and which drivers have led to the negative outcome and as a whole what is the predicted probability and the drivers which has affected it as I said positively and negatively. What we will do in this video is we will take an example from financial domain that is given a loan application of an individual whether to approve or disapprove their loan and the business or the stakeholders would like to know on what basis the ML intelligence is giving such suggestions. What are the pros on which the loan should be approved that ML intelligence thinks? What are the cons on which the loan should not be approved the ML intelligence thinks? And depending on the balance of positive and negative, what should be the final verdict? That is the first thing. We will make the ML intelligence more explainable and intuitive for business folks, for the stakeholders. Secondly, the business and stakeholder will be able to give their inputs if they expect understand what the ML intelligence is learning. For example, it may happen in data there is a pattern that people from some region or people from some ethnicity are considered risky to be approved of loan. But with this simple and intuitive explanation, if business is able to catch this thing that yes, the ML intelligence is also learning the same bias which is there in the data, they can ask the ML scientists to debias the model of such things. And what we can do is we can either remove those features, we can do feature engineering in such a way, we can add regularization and present the ML intelligence to business again in a simple, intuitive, explainable manner using the Gen AI and some of the techniques that I talked about like the feature importance, Shapley values and so on. All together we can enhance the model explainability using simple language, using Gen AI and all and present it to business to understand that why an ML intelligence is saying or giving a particular suggestion. So with that, let's get started. I will share the link of this Kaggle notebook in the description section and let's deep dive into it. First of all, we uh, will install the necessary libraries. As you can see, I have installed the Shapley library and the Shapley library is based on game theory. Using the game theory approaches, it finds that in a game, which drivers are having a positive outcome, which drivers are having a negative outcome and if all the drivers comes together, how much each one of them is contributing. Then we will load the uh, loan data set which has both train and test data. This data set is open source and is freely available. I have just taken this data set and when you run this notebook on your own, you will be easily able to access it. Next, we will look at the column description. There is, uh, you can see there is a loan ID which is a unique identifier of each loan application, gender, applicants, gender, male or female, married, whether the applicant is married or not, dependent, number of dependent the applicant has. If more dependent, that is they have more responsibilities, maybe uh, tougher for them to return the money they have taken in the form of loan. Education, what's the applicant's education level, whether they are graduate, non-graduate, are this. Next is self-employed, whether they are self-employed or not, applicant income, how much is their monthly income, co-applicant income, co-applicants monthly income, loan amount, what is the amount of loan they have requested for, loan amount term, duration in which they want to repay the loan, credit history, whether their past credit history is available or not, one means present, the past credit history, zero means we have no record of their credit history. Property area, the area where the property is located and loan status, that is whether the loan should be approved or not. So we have a trained data set where, where we already have the labels and we will train ML model to learn the intelligence from this trained data set and generalize for unseen data which is test data set. So this is how the data set looks like and we have already discussed the columns, loan ID, gender, married, dependents, education level, self-employed, applicant income, co-applicant income, loan amount, loan amount term, credit history, property area and loan status. Next, let's look at in the training data set, how many cases the loan was approved and how many cases the loan was disapproved. So we can see that around 68.7 percentage of times the loan is approved and 31.2 percent loan is not approved. Why we are doing that? We want to make sure that the ML intelligence that has learned 
uh, is better than this accuracy which is 68.7 percent otherwise we could just randomly toss a coin with 68.7 percent probability of success and depending on that approve or disapprove a loan uh, without any bet ml intelligence and if that model just this kind of baseline model is beating the ml intelligence ml intelligence is of not a much use so we want to ensure our ml intelligence give better accuracy than this analyzing the loan amount distribution is next what we will do you can see that if we see the loan amount 50 percentile is 128 75 percentile is 168 and max is 700 now these values look very small right so since the loan amount appear relatively small they might represent values in thousands of dollars so 123 may means 123k dollars 123 thousand dollars so this is one important point to note we will get back to it that's why i'm uh, mentioning it that the loan amount seems to be low because it's in thousands next is analyzing the applicant's income if monthly applicant's income is in dollars and you can see that 50th percentile is around 3812 we'll get back to this as well so remember this number as well 3812 around 3800 is the 50th percentile and 75 percentile is 5795 while the loan amount 50th percentile is 128k 75 percentile is 168k we are just understanding the data we are doing exploratory data analysis let's also look at nulls uh, gender is 13 times null married is 3 times null dependent is 15 times null so there are some records where some of them are uh, null so we'll use basic data imputation strategy what we will do all the numerical columns we will impute with zero and categorical columns right um, for example credit history is available or not or or the property area we don't know whether it's rural urban semi-urban so for categorical variable we'll just fill a uh, value of unknown and for numerical columns we will make it zero and we have performed the data imputation and post that there are there are no nulls now comes the interesting part we will, we will fit a model we will use light gbm model the reason being light gbm model is pretty good with categorical variables we don't have to encode them using one hot encoding or label encoding or any other encoding techniques light gbm inherently has all the capabilities to very elegantly process and model the categorical variables as well so we will provide uh, but we need to mention which are the categorical variables and which are numerical. So we will mention that these are the categorical variables, these are the numerical variables and uh, we will tell uh, that the categorical variables as a data type of category and then we will train the model and we will mention that categorical features are these and remaining are numerical features and then we will train the data set and if you remember the baseline had an accuracy of 68%. Our model should beat that. and um, so we will allow the model to run train and model has iteratively trained itself for 35 rounds we have an early stopping criteria we have divided the data set into train and validation you can see that we have uh, divided the train data set into train and validation and when the accuracy in validation set it stops increasing we have an early stop criteria and doing that the model has trained itself for 35 iterations and the accuracy is 74.19 which is around 6 pp more than the baseline model so the model is trained now we can look at the feature global importance feature importance can be looked at gain level and split level because we know that a tree model trains iteratively using gradient descent and our model has trained for 35 iterations using gradient descent so we can see which feature it gave more importance to while uh, considering the gain, gain in cross entropy, the gain in the binary cross entropy, which is the uh, loss function, and also while splitting, which features we are splitted more. So we can see that these are the features which are given more importance in terms of gains, and these are the features which were splitted more while training the model. Now, uh, once the model is trained, what we can do, we can get the prediction for the test data set. So that is what we will do. We will use the predict function of the model to get the prediction for the test data set for which the labels are unknown and you can think of these as the actual business use case where we have trained the ml model on the past history when where the loan was approved or disapproved depending on manual intelligence and we are modeling this manual intelligence using an ml model and uh, now the new applicants who have come for the loan application we are predicting the probability whether we should provide them the loan or not and to enhance the model explainability to tell the stakeholders to give them the confidence that ml intelligence has learned well and in simple language explain them what the ml intelligence has learned we are using gen ai and that will come soon so we have uh, predicted for the new applicants who have come for loan application the probability what should be the uh, probability with which we should provide them loan high probability means yes we can provide them loan there is not much risk low probability means there is risk 
नाउ वी विल एनालाइज सम ऑफ द हाई एंड लो रिस्क की केसेस हाई लो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ प्रोवाइडिंग लोन मींस हाई रिस्क बिकॉज बिकॉज द प्रोबेबिलिटी टू प्रोवाइड लोन इज ऑन द लोअर साइड एंड हाई प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ लोन मींस लेस रिस्की केसेस वी कैन प्रोवाइड दम लोन सो वी विल एनालाइज दिस टू केसेस एंड सी एट इंस्टेंस लेवल व्हाट द मॉडल हैज लर्न एंड एक्सप्लेन इन सिंपल लैंग्वेज टू द स्टेक होल्डर्स वी विल यूज शेपली वैल्यूज विच आर टेकन फ्रॉम गेम थ्योरी शेपली इज बेस्ड ऑन गेम थ्योरी वेर इट फाइंड द importance of each player in a game so you can think of one instance one request of the individual as a game and they have different features those are the players and we will figure out that how much importance to give to each features and whether the feature is impacting the game in positive way or negative way and total total when the whole uh, game is played with all the players at once together what is the game's output so what shapley value does is for each instance we will get uh, this kind of values that expected value that on an average uh, what should be the probability of giving loan to a person and top of it depending on the players features that applicants income is 2400 is it a positive factor yes it's a positive factor you can see that the shapley value is positive and if uh, for example credit history is not available which is a big negative factor you can see that shapley value is negative so we need to look at the magnitude of shapley values as well as the sign of shapley value negative means negatively impacting positive means positively helping to get a loan and then we will use gen ai how we will use gen ai we will do prompt engineering so what i have done in this video is instead of calling chat gpt i have already called it in a offline manner and i am uh, showing you the prompt and what response chat gpt returned so what i did was i gave chat gpt the prompt that here are the feature definitions that these are the features and uh, perform a detailed analysis and explain in plain english whether the loan should be provided or not with reasoning in under 75 words highlighting both pros and cons if any typically the loan is approved if probability is greater than 0.5 and uh, one more thing i have done is given the shape values i provided the shape value for this individual so we will iteratively run for each individual first individual we will uh, tell chat gpt the feature uh, what does features stands for and what are the shapley values and we will ask it that what are the pros cons and overall uh, reasoning depending on the shape values tell us what the model has learned and tell us in simple language whether the loan should be approved or not with with pros cons and overall so let's look at the first individual this is, this is the shapley plot where you can see the positive ones are pushing the probability towards positive side and the blue ones pushing the positive probability towards negative side of getting loan or not and this minus 0.48 is the log of odds and log of odds can be converted into probability uh, so you can see here that the log of, log of odds is 0.48 and we are uh, passing doing the prompt engineering that provide perform a detailed analysis given these shapley values and explain us the pros cons and overall so what it has done is it has uh, you can see that log of odds of was minus 0.48 and probability is 0.38 so these are the low probable cases of providing loan and what's the reasoning the applicant has a reasonable income so income is good let's see the income income is c2400 it's a good income the applicant has reasonable income the a graduate education he is also graduate and is from an urban area which are positive factors the loan amount and repayment terms are also within reasonable range so these are the pros what are the cons the applicant has poor credit history the credit history is not available at all you can see the credit history is zero the applicant has poor credit history and is not married the co applicant income is also low which might raise concerns about financial stability given the poor credit history and lack of marital status despite other positive factors the loan should likely be denied so because of low co applicant income not ha having uh, the credit history and also not being married these are the risk factors for which overall the loan shouldn't be approved let's look at the second case for the second case applicant is married has a stable income and resides in semi urban area while the cons are application applicant has poor credit history again the credit history is not there and requesting for a relatively large loan amount if you remember i was showing that loan amount is in thousands so 259000 dollars which is much more than 75 percentile so because they are asking for a very high low amount the loan should likely be denied due to significant risk posed by applicant's poor credit history and high loan amount requested despite other favorable factors let's look at the third one where the log of odds is minus 0.98 and probability of providing loan is uh, 0.31 the pros are the applicant is married which can be seen as a positive factor for financial stability and the loan amount is reasonable for the given term so they have asked for uh, reasonable loan amount and also they are married but the 
on downside the cons are the applicant has poor credit history the credit history is not available and has low income levels their income is also not very high additionally the property is in rural area which may present high risk so we what the ml intelligence has learned is rural area has high risk semi urban and urban have lower risk so they are saying because of rural area poor credit history and low income level uh, the loan should be disapproved given the significant negative factors impact of the poor credit history and low income the loan should not be approved let's look at one more case the applicant has higher income and holds a graduate degree which can be seen as positive factor so graduate is one and as well as uh, applicant income is high the, uh, the applicant has no co applicant income the co applicant of the loan has no income and poor credit history credit history is zero additionally being unmarried may suggest less financial support also they are unmarried right so overall despite high income and education qualifications the significant negative impact of the poor credit history lack of co applicant income and not being married suggests the loan should not be approved so in this way the shapley values have been beautifully explained by gen ai uh, and what stakeholders will understand with this kind of intelligence is that okay the mod ml intelligence is not favoring the rural areas is not favoring the people with low credit history is not favoring the people who have not married and if they are okay with it they can give their feedback and you depending on their feedback the we can tweak the model and improve try to improve it now we will what we will do is we will look at the other case where the probability of providing loan is high where the model ml intelligence is saying yes provide them the loan so uh, similar kind of feature in prompt engineering we have done and let's see the reasons here you can see that the red ones are high which are pushing more towards the uh, probability of higher loan uh, approval pros the applicant has good credit history you can see that the credit history is one and is married which are positive indicators cons the applicant income is relatively high but the loan amount and repayment term are less favorable they have asked for a very low loan amount despite some concerns about the loan amount and co applicant income okay co applicant income is also zero so despite some concerns around loan amount the loan amount is very less and as well as co applicant income is not there the strong credit history and marital status suggest that loan should be approved let's look at one more the applicant has good credit history and is married which positively influences the loan approval uh, yes the applicant is married and has uh, credit history is also one cons the co the low co applicant income co applicant income is on the lower side 1644 the low co applicant income and applicant non graduate education okay education is also non graduate so ml intelligence is favoring graduates over non graduate and that is what we would like in ml intelligence to learn right the low co applicant income and applicant non graduate education are minor concerns however they are they are outweighed by positive factors considering the strong credit history and marital status the loan should be approved despite some minor concerns let's look at one more the pros are the applicant has good credit history strong income both the applicant and co applicant have substantial income let's see yeah they have pretty good income uh, which are favorable so credit history strong income are the positive cons the applicant is not married and property is located in rural area which could be a less favorable compared to other factors given the strong credit history and substantial income the loan should be approved despite the concerns related to marital status and property location so we can see for other uh, examples as well so uh, with that we come to the end of this video where we looked at how the feature model explainability can be enhanced with gen ai gen ai is very good in explaining in plain english what the model has learned given we have provided the prompt in a good way and here we have provided prompt by defining the features and then the uh, shapley data frame that what are the different features and how they are playing in uh, pro, uh, predicting the loan probability and with gen ai using chat gpt we can use some other ml model as well other llm as well uh, it will be able to tell that in plain english what the model has learned now think of it in a scenario where there are 200 features let's say some production ml model has 200 features here we have 10 12 features which can be eyeballed as well but let's think of a production model which has 200 factors and depending on the individual different factors may be up and down uh, in those kind of scenarios also gen ai can quickly help us to figure out which are the top 5 pros top 5 cons and whether the loan approves loan should be approved or not and since it is able to provide the answer in such a beautiful plain english it's very beneficial for business and stakeholders to understand what the ml intelligence has learned and provide their business knowledge as input to ml scientists to further tweak the model to debias some of the uh, patterns that is there in the data but we don't want ml intelligence to have i gave example for example we want like 
loan to be approved or disapproved based on ethnicity or particular regions and so on so depending on the business uh, requirement and inputs we can tweak the model so that's it in this video please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates bye